ever feel like uh you know your computer is just not quite keeping up with you yeah like it's stuck in the you know the slow lane <laughs> yeah. while your brain is kind of like racing ahead right well imagine a computer that operates at like the street of light mm. literally yeah that's the mind-blowing potential of optical computing right I'm your host, and with me today is... Um, I'm uh, an expert in optics and photonics. And we're diving into this really fascinating world. It's becoming super important now. Right. Especially as we kind of rely more and more on things like AI and the Internet of Things. Absolutely. That's driving a lot of the research. It feels like everything is AI-powered these days. Everything is AI-powered. Right. I mean, and we're connecting more and more devices. Yeah. So all that data has to be processed somehow. Yeah. But it seems like our good old electronics, you know, they're reaching their limit. Yeah. What do you think about that? Like trying to cram all the world's information through a dial-up modem. Ah. We're hitting a bottleneck. And you know the famous Moore's Law. Right. It predicted that the number of transistors on a microchip would double every two years. Right. That's slowing down. Yeah. And that's leading to some real world limitations. Yeah. If if that's slowing down, things are going to get slower for us. For sure. Our devices are going to get slower. Oh, yeah. So we need like a faster highway for all this data, right? Exactly. And that's where this idea of optical computing comes in. Hmm. Using light instead of electricity to process information. Yeah. I mean, light is the fastest thing in the universe. It is the fastest. Right, yeah. at least as far as we know. Yeah. So it makes sense to kind of try to harness that. Absolutely. What's fascinating is that this isn't even a new idea, right? No. Like way back in the 1980s, mm -hmm. researchers were experimenting with something called shadow casting. Yeah. Which used geometric optics to perform calculations. Mm. Shadow casting, that just sounds so cool. Yeah, it does. How did that actually work? It was a very clever approach. It used the way that light casts shadows to perform calculations. Yeah, interesting. But it had limitations. It wasn't very flexible, and it was difficult to integrate with other technologies. It yeah. was a good first step, though. Yeah. But we needed something more uh, revolutionary, right. more uh, flexible. And it sounds like we might have that revolution with this new research that was just featured in Advanced Photonics. Yes. It's called diffraction casting. Yes. It's being spearheaded by researchers at the University of Tokyo. So we're taking a deep dive into this paper. Yeah. Um, and what they found is fascinating. Yeah. So how is diffraction casting different? It's a game changer because it leverages wave optics, uh -huh. which is all about how light diffracts and interferes with itself. Okay, so we're not talking about simple shadows anymore. Right. This is some, like, next-level stuff. Absolutely. Much more complex and uh, much more powerful. Okay. Yeah. Imagine dropping a pebble into a still pond. You see those ripples spreading out? Mm -hmm. That's wave optics in action. So with diffraction casting, we can create these special filters. They're called diffractive optical elements, uh -huh. and they act like carefully shaped edges in our pond. Uh -huh. They guide and manipulate those light waves to perform calculations. So we're like programming the light to process information. In a way, yeah, we're controlling how it interacts with itself. That's incredible. But how well does it actually work? The results are astounding. Okay. They were able to achieve all 16 possible logic operations okay. on 256-bit inputs. Wow. And they did it without a single error, all at the speed of light. I'm getting chills just thinking about the possibilities here. Yeah. That This really does feel like a huge paradigm shift in computing. It really does. But I think we need to unpack that a little, you know. What? what does all this mean in practical terms? Well, for one, we're talking about speeds that are orders of magnitude faster okay. than what we're used to. Imagine tasks that take hours on your current computer yeah. being completed in fractions of a second. Right. And it's not just about speed. Yeah. It's about handling incredibly complex calculations opening up a world of possibilities right. in fields like medicine, artificial intelligence, even our everyday devices. This is where it gets really exciting for me. Yeah. So let's dive into those possibilities and explore how this could impact our lives. Starting with AI, what kind of breakthroughs could we see there? Well, imagine AI that's not just faster, right. but capable of tackling problems that are currently like impossible. Yeah. You know, think about medical diagnoses that are incredibly accurate. Wow. And tailored to each person. Okay. Or self-driving cars that can navigate like any environment, right. no that, matter how complex. It sounds like something out of a science fiction movie. It does. Um, are there any other areas where this kind of processing power could make a real difference? 
Absolutely. Image processing is another great example. Uh, With optical computing, real-time image analysis could become commonplace. Hmm. Think about doctors being able to analyze medical scans instantly. Right. Spotting the smallest abnormalities with incredible precision. That's incredible. It's like giving doctors superpowers to <laughs> see things that were previously invisible. Yeah. And speaking of superpowers, I'm really curious about the potential impact on AI development. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that optical computing could dramatically increase training speeds. Yeah. What does that mean for the future of AI? It means we could see a whole new generation of AI systems. Okay. Systems that can learn faster. Right. Process information more efficiently. Okay. And solve problems that are currently beyond our reach. So we're not just talking about like incremental improvements here. No. This could be a fundamental shift in what AI is capable of. Exactly. Think about AI that can predict earthquakes before they happen. Wow. Or personalize cancer treatments based on an individual's genetic makeup. Mm. We could even see AI designing entirely new materials with properties we never thought possible. It's mind-blowing to consider what could be achieved with that level of computational power. It is. But let's bring it back down to Earth for a second. Okay. How could optical computing affect the devices we use every day? Mm. Like our smartphones and laptops. Imagine those devices becoming exponentially faster. Okay. They could handle much more complex tasks yeah. and run more demanding applications without breaking a sweat. Right. Think about streaming 4K holographic videos without any lag. Wow. Or editing high resolution photos in real time. It sounds like we're talking about a completely different digital experience. It is. Yeah. And I can only imagine what this would mean for gaming, for sure. virtual reality, yeah. all sorts of other applications. Absolutely. Uh -huh. But with any powerful new technology, there are also challenges to consider. Right. As optical computing develops, we need to think carefully about how to integrate it into our existing systems yeah. and ensure that it's accessible to everyone. That's a really important point. Mm -hmm. We need to make sure that this technology doesn't just benefit a select few. Yeah but that it's used to improve lives across the board. Exactly. And that brings up the question of scalability. Mm. How easy will it be to scale up this technology to meet the demands of a world that's becoming increasingly data-driven? That's one of the things that makes diffraction casting so promising. Okay. It's inherently scalable. We can start small with lab-sized setups okay. and then gradually scale up to create larger and more complex systems. Right. It also integrates well with existing technologies, which makes it easier to adopt in a wide range of applications. So it's not like we need to reinvent the entire wheel here. Not at all. It's more like adding a powerful new engine to a car that's already built. Mm -hmm. We can take advantage of the existing infrastructure and gradually introduce optical components as they become available. That's reassuring to hear. Mm. But even with a smooth integration, it seems like there's still going to be some hurdles to overcome. What are some of the biggest challenges that researchers are facing? Well, one of the key challenges is miniaturization. Okay. While diffraction casting works beautifully in a laboratory setting, right. shrinking those optical elements down to a size that fits in our smartphones or laptops yeah. is a major engineering feat. Right. It's one thing to have a proof of concept, Yeah. but it's quite another to make it commercially viable and affordable. Absolutely. What other potential roadblocks do you see? Another big one is power consumption. Okay. Although light-based computing is inherently energy efficient, right. the supporting infrastructure still requires power. Yeah. So finding ways to optimize energy usage will be crucial, okay. especially for mobile devices. Those are definitely some significant challenges, but it seems like the potential benefits are so immense that it's worth putting in the effort to solve these problems. Yeah. It's a bit like the early days of the internet, where there were all sorts of technical hurdles to overcome, but people could see the transformative potential and push forward anyway. It's a great analogy, and I think we're seeing the same kind of pioneering spirit with optical computing. Mm. There's a whole generation of researchers who are incredibly passionate about this field, right. and they're constantly pushing the boundaries of what's possible. It's inspiring to see that level of dedication. And speaking of pushing boundaries, mm -hmm. what are some of the most cutting edge areas of research in optical computing right now? Mm. Where do you see the most potential for future breakthroughs? One area that I find particularly fascinating is the development of hybrid optical electronic computing systems. Okay. Combining the strengths of both approaches could lead to some truly remarkable advances. It's like creating a super brain that blends the best of both worlds. Yeah. What kind of advantages would these hybrid systems offer? 
Well, for one, um, they could help us overcome some of the limitations of each individual technology. Right. For example, electronic components are fantastic for data storage yeah. and manipulation. While optical components, they excel at high-speed data transmission <laughs> and processing. Right. By combining them, we could create systems that are both incredibly powerful yeah. and incredibly efficient. It's almost like a relay race where each runner specializes in a different leg of the race. Yeah. Right. That's a great analogy. By working together, they can achieve a much faster overall time. Exactly. And this type of collaboration could lead to some really innovative computing designs, mm. architectures that are optimized for very specific tasks, right. whether that's machine learning, scientific simulations, or even creative endeavors like music composition wow. or film editing. The possibilities really do seem kind of endless. They do. It feels like we're at the start of a new computing renaissance. It does. With these innovations happening at a breakneck speed. Yeah, and it's not just the technology itself. It's right. the people behind it. Yeah. There's a whole generation of, you know, brilliant researchers, engineers, entrepreneurs who are so passionate about this field. And they're pushing the boundaries of what's possible every single day. It's inspiring to see that level of dedication. And as this technology continues to evolve... You know, yeah. I think it's important to remember that it's not just about speed and efficiency. All right. It's about using these tools to make a positive impact on the world. I completely agree, whether it's developing new medical treatments, addressing climate change, right. or connecting people across vast distances. Optical computing has the potential to help us solve some of the biggest challenges facing humanity. Yeah. It's a powerful reminder that technology can be a force for good. For sure. When it's used with purpose and a bit of compassion. This has been such an enlightening deep dive into the world of optical computing. It has. I'm leaving this conversation feeling incredibly optimistic about the future and inspired by the potential of the human mind. Yeah. If we can harness the power of light to illuminate the path forward, I have no doubt that we can create a brighter future for ourselves and for future generations. Yeah. It's definitely a future worth striving for. And who knows, maybe one day we'll look back at this moment yeah. as the dawn of the optical computing age. And to everyone listening, I encourage you to keep exploring, keep questioning, mm. and keep imagining the future isn't something that just happens to us. It's something we create together. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive, and until next time, keep your minds open to the wonders of the universe.